it's Julianne. Uh, after 12 minutes of delays, we're finally live. Uh, welcome to Baking with Friends. I'm gonna have my friend Akila with me baking Berry Dream Pie today, uh, which is basically a pie that comes out of the repertoire of uh, Petey's Pie here in New York. There is a great cookbook called Pie for Everyone that basically got released a few weeks ago and I've been making my way through the uh, recipes in that cookbook and today we're going to attempt this lemon curd marscapone uh, kind of pie filling situation so apologies for uh, the frazzleness um, for those of you who don't know it's early voting day in uh, new york city so we're all very excited here in new york to vote and that's where i was up until literally an hour ago so <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and grab aquila hey this works aquila if you can hear me and Mary's on, um, just in case anybody has any comments, but welcome back everyone. I know there's been a bit of a break, um, but we're here in October. Yay! Hi. Right. I'm gonna try to increase my volume. Okay, so for those of you who are baking with us today, there's a lot of components for this pie. There's going to be three things that we're doing today. That's not including making a pie crust. So if you wanna make your life easier, uh, you can go ahead, we ask that you pre-bake to your pie crust. Uh, so for example, I have a ready-made pie crust sitting right here that is going to get filled with all the fillings that we've got later on. So this should, part should be done already. Um, I went ahead and I provided two different recipes that you could have used for the pie crust. One is the Petey's pie crust uh, that comes with the recipe book. And then the other would be um, my basic, my favorite basic pie crust. But you can use any recipe that you wanted. And if you didn't want to use that, you could have actually also used a store-bought pie crust. No one's judging you. This is totally up to you. Um, but Akil and I are going to show you how, really quickly, to go ahead and pull together a pie crust, which actually doesn't take very long. Um, it's the waiting that you have to do. So Akila, as you can see, is already grating her butter. It's frozen, or it should be. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my it frozen is. butter as well. It is. And Julian, let me tell you, so for my pie crust, I yes. use Petey's recipe, but then I read uh, the Series Eats kind of pre-baking rules, and so they recommended lowering the temperature and actually covering the whole thing in foil as Before. a way of the flakiness and the form without kind of the butter just eking out right at a higher temperature. So I used, I think it's the Stella Parks instructions on how to pre-bake a pie crust. Instead. Yeah, I mean, and this is where I was saying that, like, you know, especially if you're a person that bakes a lot, or you baked a lot of pie, um, or you've got your favorite kind of pie crust, you don't necessarily have to use the recipes that I, that I presented to you. You just have to kind of, they all basically include the same thing, right? Flour, butter, sugar, salt. That's all you need. And if you don't want butter, let's say you want a vegan crust, you can use like a shortening, you can go ahead and use like a vegan butter, you can use coconut oil, there's a lot of options that you can go ahead and utilize just to um, create the crust. So I'm gonna go ahead and Akilah's grating her butter and let me go ahead and show you what I'm gonna utilize. Um, you guys for a second. Okay, <laughs> so today everyone should be proud. I'm wearing an apron. So <laughs> that's new for me. You're welcome guys, it's October, you're welcome. Um, my friend Rini made this apron for me. So Rini, if you're out there and you're watching, that's for you. So basically, the easiest way to go ahead and pull together a pie crust is you can just go ahead and do this by hand. Um, that's the easiest way. If you have a pastry cutter, go ahead and utilize that. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and just do that by hand. And um, Akil and I are just going to go ahead and show you. I'm pulling my butter, actually, right out of the freezer. It's like rock hard out of the freezer. Um, you need one stick of butter in most recipes. I'm using the Petey's Crust recipe. Um, this is one stick of butter. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do what Akila did, and I'm just gonna grate that butter down into a bowl. And what you're trying to achieve here is you're basically trying, the reason why we're grating this butter opposed to anything else is because the butter is already gonna be fine and a little bit more, um, should I say, like chopped up than it would be otherwise. Um, and I find in not just pie crust, but also in biscuits, the distribution of butter is better when you grate your butter. You can dice your butter, that's totally okay as well, but you definitely need them to be in small pieces. And the great thing about grating your butter is that if you grate your butter, the pieces already are pretty small. So when you mix it in with your flour, it's, um, it's all sorted already. Yeah, and I find that it melts a little less so that you don't actually apply the heat as much and you can actually incorporate 
your pie crust a bit better without okay. melting it so that you can kind of get that flakiness in your resulting pie crust. Yeah, and I'm using, um, Akil and I both used a hand grater. Um, right now I'm using a hand grater as well. But you could totally just put this in a food processor. There's a grating tool on your food processor to do this before you actually put the whole thing in your food processor to, to mix. You can literally take all these ingredients, put it in a food processor and blitz it, and you've already comprised uh, all the things you need for your pie. Um, what always happens is as I'm grating the butter, the last bit of butter starts to get a little melty in my hand, and I'm like, uh-oh, gotta work fast. So if you're you making- get, I actually froze my cheese grater. Oh, um, the cheese grater was really cold and the metal was really cold and it, it kind of helps to reduce that melting as you, cause the heat, you know, it, it starts creating heat as you're grating. So a nice cold frozen cheese grater actually helps with that. I agree. That's a good, that's a good tip actually, Akila, because, um, you can also freeze the bowl that you're putting all this stuff in. Yeah. Uh, you definitely should have really cold water or like, you know, practically the water that I use for the PD's recipe, you use the boiling water to melt down your sugar and your salt. Yeah, right. But then you take the whole bowl of water and you stick it in your freezer. So that way it's cold by the time you incorporate it. Because the whole thing with pie crust is you need that butter to be as cold as possible because the butter melting creates the air pockets in your crust that creates the flakes. Nobody wants to bite into a pie crust that's really tough. Let's be honest. You want those nice little flakes, and to be fair, I'll share a little small tidbit uh, with you guys about like pie crust and stories. Um, I took a pie crust, uh, or rather a pie class, and um, the person teaching it was all about all butter, did not want to talk about shortening, and said to us, shortening was a crutch. But I'm all for crutches, guys. If it's easier in your life, totally use shortening, because shortening will definitely guarantee that you will have uh, the flakiness if butter is not your friend. So those are the two thoughts for you. But I've got a whole bunch of grated butter now in my bowl. It's a whole stick, there you go, of butter. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take my flour. Now my flour, like Akila was saying, like all the instruments that she was using is cold. I was saying that you can go ahead and use uh, really cold water um, to go ahead and get everything. And I'm grabbing all the last bits of butter. All the butter, guys, take all the butter. Please don't waste the butter. Butter's delicious. Never um, Take the butter. Um, I froze my flour. So I went and I put my flour in the freezer as well, which of course is behind me. So I'm like having to go around. I also so. say, and for this PD recipe, I needed maybe like four or five more tablespoons of cold water. Yes. I would say that you go ahead and start, and actually, that's such a great segue because uh, you can go ahead and use cold water, or guys, I went ahead and, if you follow me on Instagram, I made yogurt the other day, and I had a whole bunch of leftover whey, and Ooh. you can actually use the leftover, this is the leftover whey, you can use leftover whey in your pie crust. So, Ooh. does it add like a tanginess? Yeah, it'll give it a slight tang. I like so, that. So, that's what I'm going to use for my extra water, but I still have my sugar, salt, and water mixture, and that's um, a half a tablespoon of sugar, three-quarter tablespoon salt, two tablespoons of boiling water that I went ahead and I put in the fridge and the freezer and froze. Um, about 30 minutes before we started, so it's nice and cold. I did and that. I went ahead. I did more water in addition yes. to this. and always have more water on hand because if it doesn't work, then you add in about a teaspoon at a time, one to two teaspoons at a time. And then now I've got my flour. This is three-quarters cup. Uh, pastry flour, a third cup of all-purpose flour. If you don't have pastry flour at home, use all all-purpose. You can mix in whole wheat, you can use rye, you can use whatever flour you've got on hand. So I'm just gonna dump that straight into my bowl. I'm not gonna touch the mixture yet with my hands. I'm just gonna mix it with a spatula. If you have really big chunks of butter in your bowl right now, while you're making this pie crust, then you take your fingers and you mix it in by hand and press down onto the butter because you basically want them to be, they always say in cookbooks, pea-sized, pea-sized butter. And that's basically what you want. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now. You can kind of see like the little granules of butter. Yeah, I don't um, know, mine are, mine is done at this point. So you can still see the, the kind of the bigger chunks in there. I did go in with my hands the whole time though. Yeah. 
I would say there's nothing wrong with going in with your hands and pressing in. Um, what it does though is it will definitely make it warm. But if you see big chunks like this, like you basically yeah. need to break that down a little bit. It can't be that big. You don't want big chunks because like I told you and what Akil and I were saying in the beginning is that um, you want small flakes of butter happening because if you have big chunks, all the flakiness is gonna incorporate in like one part and then the rest of your crust won't have it. So you wanna distribute that butter to as many places as you can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take, this is the initial batch of water. I'm gonna go ahead and just mix it in and I'm doing all this by hand, but again, you can put this in a food processor if you want to, to make this go oh. faster. But I'm just like mixing this right now. So see how mine's dry? That's still pretty dry. I'm gonna go ahead and grab you can grab cold water, and usually you go about a teaspoon at a time. Um, a tablespoon at a time. You I go a tablespoon? Out of impatience. Sheer impatience. I'm going to eyeball this, so we're going to uh, let's find out. So I'm using the whey, the really cold whey that I've got. But again, if you've got cold water at home, and what you're going to do is you're going to mix it. And you just add, again, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of water at a time. And what it's going to start to do is it's going to start to come together, and it's going to start to clump together. You don't need it to be completely wet. Um, it can go ahead and be a little bit dry. It's when you start pushing it together with your hands, it should start to stick. See how mine's still a little bit floury? That means that I need more liquid. So I'm adding in a little bit more whey. Probably a lot more whey than I need to. <laughs> so I'm gonna just add in um, about, I don't know, I eyeballed probably, it was about uh, two teaspoons. And I'm going to go ahead and mix. And there's going to come a time as you go that you can start just using your hands and not use like the spatula anymore. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to check to see if that it's coming together. So as you can see in my bowl, it's starting to clump. If it's too wet, the thing about pie crust is forgiving. If it's too wet, you add more flour. If it's too dry, you add more liquid. Yeah. And then you basically want to get to what Akila did where she went ahead and she formed it into a ball, into a disc. Mine is not there yet. Mine's super crumbly. And my camera keeps on turning. They're super crumbly. So I'm going to add more liquid. I'm throwing mine in the freezer. Yes. Once you get it to the level that Aquila is at, you just want to go ahead and just take the whole thing, wrap it up into a disc, and just stick it in the freezer. So mine still needs a little bit more. I'm going to start clumping. Oh, actually, no. So I'm using my hands now to just kind of clump everything together. And because I did not change the camera angle, you can't see. But now it's clumped together. And that is good to go. And what I'm going to do is like Akila did, I'm just going to form it into a ball, stick it in some plastic wrap. The great thing about the PD's recipe is it really doesn't need as much time to rest, I think, as a lot of the other recipes. Um, you can go ahead and stick it in the fridge or the freezer if you're out of time for like 10 or 15 minutes and then roll it out into whatever desired shape you need into like a circle and then go ahead and place it in your pie pan. And I would actually freeze the dough in your pie pan for probably about 10 or 15 minutes in the fridge yeah. before you want to use it because you want it to be, like I said before, as cold as possible. So here's my dough. Yeah. I think I froze in the pie pan for about... 30 minutes in the freezer before I threw it in the oven. You guys are like moving with me. <laughs> so, all right. So that's a really quick pie crust that you can go ahead and pull together. And again, in this, uh, in this iteration of us doing pie together, uh, we're not actually gonna roll this out and like do all the steps to do pie, but um, you can go ahead and roll that out as you will. Uh, if you're going to put this in the freezer, you can do that. If you don't want to use it right away, uh, you can use it. Just make sure that it's flattened out. And then if we get it come to room temp, I would just defrost in your fridge before you roll it out. Um, otherwise, if you're probably going to use it in the, like, the next few days or weeks, I would actually roll it out, put it in a pie pan, and freeze it in the pie pan um, because it will make your life 100 times easier. So this is going in my fridge. There we go. Done. That's like one thing that All we right. did. All right, next. Now we're getting into the actual pie. This is where it's gonna get dicey. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. So everybody, the bad thing is, is I was like, where did I put all my bowls? Okay. I know. All right, so there's gonna be, we're gonna start with the berry glaze. So 
the berry glaze, you're going to go ahead and need, oh my God, I completely forgot the berries. <laughs> forgot the berries. Well, I can answer Mary's question. Mary. Yeah, yeah. Answer Mary's food. question while I grab berries. My baking cocktail over here is actually just a Campari spritz. So it's just some nice. Campari, a little lemon juice, and seltzer. Because it's nice and kind of a nice mellow afternoon cocktail to have. Well, I totally forgot my berries. I was like, where are my berries? Uh, so we're starting with a berry glaze. We're going to need a blender. It's the easiest way to puree. If you have a hand blender, that's perfectly OK as well. I completely forgot the chaos of live baking. Have you missed this? Have I missed this? I don't know. Well, also <laughs> vote, you know, you waited three hours to vote today, which is great. Yeah, so <laughs> you guys, I waited in line for over three hours to early vote today in Brooklyn, and it was well worth my time. And I hope everybody goes out and exercises yeah. so great to vote as you should in this democracy and let your voice be heard. So um, I completely forgot about the berries, but I've decided that I'm using raspberries. I am also using raspberries. I'm using raspberries yeah. for my puree. Um, you're gonna need about eight ounces. Uh, eight ounces is a little bit more than a pint. So about a pint and like a little bit, a pint and a quarter or so. If you wanna go crazy, you can do more than that and just like dump out a whole bunch of berries, but that's completely up to you and what you feel and your berry delight. So if you want more berries, then I would say um, hold on to it. But the best thing is, is that you're gonna take the rest of the berries that you don't use. So like, let's say you bought two packages of this, use the rest of the berries that you didn't use as whole berries in the pie. So I would use about a, a pint and a quarter and then save the rest and the rest we're gonna have whole. And it doesn't really matter. And I just realized that I didn't go through my berries, but I have to check my berries. You don't want to eat berries that have gone bad, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. But while I'm checking my berries, um, everybody, you should have uh, raspberries, blackberries, or strawberries. Those are your choices for today. Um, and then you're going to also have some sugar, some cornstarch, a little bit of lemon juice, uh, probably a pinch of salt as well. And we're going to go ahead and puree all of that stuff in a blender. So all this stuff that we're about to do is just going to be in your handy-dandy blender. We're not going to need any other tools for this. If you don't have a regular hand blender or regular blender at home, uh, you can go ahead and stick it in your food processor if you want, if you have a food processor. Yeah. If you don't have a food processor and you're like, Julianne, I have no tools, like these are things that I don't know what you're talking about. If you've got a potato masher, yeah, you can use a potato masher. You, if you don't have a potato masher, maybe you have a pastry cutter, use your pastry cutter. If you don't have a pastry cutter, then use your hands. Julianne, if you're using it, if you're doing it by hand with a potato masher, would you actually mash them at the step of what's hot and you're kind of cooking it down versus when it's cold? Sorry, Kayla, as you were talking to me, my cat tried to jump up oh, no. <laughs> well, you've got onto my, uh, my table here. And it's a good thing I didn't have any of the items that we need for baking because she completely <laughs> knocked over everything that was on the table. I so, that. on that hey, note, I <laughs> you were saying, Akila, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying, if you're going to do it manually by hand, I would think it would probably be easier to mash once you've kind of heated them up on the stove and started to get it sauced down because you could the, the heat will probably help you get it more into a puree rather than just trying to do it when it's cold. Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. Um, if you do it by hand when it's cold, the berries aren't going to be as mashable. I would go ahead and you're going to have to skip the step that we're about to accomplish right now. So I've got my berries sorted. Let me give them a really quick rinse. All right. So I have my berries. I'm going to show you. So we're going to go ahead and take, I'm going to use a blender. I'm also using a blender. So let me see if I can change angles for you guys. Um, maybe not. All right. I'm going to have to back up with my blender. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a blender. And in this blender, I'm going to go ahead and put a tablespoon plus two teaspoons of cornstarch. Okay. And then I'm also going to put half a cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. So here's my sugar. I'm dumping that into my blender. I'm also dumping in my cornstarch. And the reason why you want the cornstarch is we're going to make the cornstarch is going to make the compote uh, thicker. And we're adding it in now so that it blends because the worst thing that you'll do is make a compote and then add the cornstarch after and then it cools. It just gets tacky. Yeah. It's disgusting. And I then you're going to take all your berries and we're going to stick it in a blender. I also cannot plug going to the restaurant supply store enough. 
getting mise bowls because it makes all of your pre-preparation for baking. You can measure everything out and then you just have it all ready to go. I have kind of all of the different steps oh. measured and ready to go. So that's a good idea. The supply store, it's amazing. And you can get these like tiny bowls in different sizes and they're so useful. If you guys have been getting a lot of takeout like I have, um, you also will get random containers uh, such as this in that your takeout like food and you can reuse these and do that. So I'm about to put all this stuff in a blender. I feel like yep. you're doing the same. So we're just gonna go ahead and blitz this. So I'm sticking that on my blender and I'm just gonna go ahead and... That should take us like a second. Now it's like pureed. So I can tell that I've got a little bit of flour at the bottom of that that I need to go ahead and sort out. Or rather a little bit of cornstarch. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain that all into our saucepan. Are we straining it or just pouring it, pouring it in? I would go ahead, oh, you know what? You let's pour it in because you do want the seeds. Okay. If you want the seeds to go ahead and showcase. So if you were using raspberries, if you ever notice with raspberries, you do get these like little seeds. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and have the little seeds. Strawberries will do the same thing. Uh, blackberries, not so much so if you're using blackberries, but we're just gonna go ahead and pour that straight into a saucepan. I've got this like juice deliciousness. We're almost making what one, one would say, Akilah, would this be like a coulis? Would you consider yeah, it like I think so. I think so. I do wonder with the coulis, do you use something like cornstarch to thicken or is it more slow cooked? I feel like you do use like a little bit of cornstarch or flour yeah. in a coulis. Yeah, but you do use a lot more. I would say you use a lot more. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on medium on the stove top. All right. And we're going to go ahead and wait until the berry compote kind of starts bubbling. And once it starts bubbling, we're going to go ahead and reduce the heat down to low. Um, but it's going to take about like five -ish minutes, five to 10 minutes or so to go ahead and uh, sort out the berry glaze. But while that's happening, we can go ahead and get sorted with the rest of our ingredients. So I'm going to dump the rest of this in there. Oops. Everybody for a hot minute. For some reason, my, my phone disconnected, but it's back up. So hopefully we might've lost people and now they're back. Um, and uh, apologies. But we went ahead and just put, if you're just tuning in now, Akil and I demoed a pie crust that you can use for later. Hopefully you pre-baked and blind baked your pie crust. We are now on the stove. We're making our berry glaze. Um, we're just waiting for it to heat up. It's gonna take about five to 10 minutes to kind of get it down uh, to a little bit uh, more of a thicker compote style. And now we're about to go ahead and grab another saucepan because we are gonna go ahead and create a lemon curd. Uh, so we are gonna need for this sugar, cornstarch, salt, a whole lot of lemon juice, some eggs, uh, a little bit of water, and at the end, we're gonna drop some butter for a little bit of creaminess and shine. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab, I'm gonna grab a saucepan, which I had. You guys are gonna have to back up with me. Everything is behind the camera today. Behind the camera. There we go. I would grab a saucepan. I would probably grab a whisk if you've got it, or a spatula, a high, uh, a spatula that can um, be utilized. Which think is better, a whisk or a spatula for this? Um, I like, I like using a whisk. Okay. However. The whisk is gonna help us. So if it starts to brown at the top, the spatula would probably be a better choice because we can push down. So let's use a spatula. Um, but if you don't have a spatula that's um, that's heat resistant, guys, then a whisk is totally okay. And if you don't have a whisk, use a fork. Okay, I've got a silicone spatula and a whisk. Okay. All right. Um, what we're gonna do is, I like putting everything together in the, same, in the saucepan and but not do with a whole bunch of bowls. Got it. Because we're gonna have to stick it in the saucepan anyway. So I'm gonna use a saucepan as my bowl. So start with some sugar. We're gonna have um, one half cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. So that's what I've got in here. And I'm just gonna dump that into my saucepan. And then I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch, which is right here, that I'm also gonna dump in. In a clump. Might need a spatula help. And then, 
I've got a quarter teaspoon of salt that I'm also going to just drop into the bowl. Can I ask what the salt you're using? Um, I'm just using a Mediterranean sea salt. Okay, because I yeah. use diamond crystal kosher, and I feel like you always kind of almost need to double it to get the same amount of saltiness. Yeah, as... I think if you use so... different kinds of salt, that's actually a good segue, Akila. If you're using different kinds of salt, you definitely have to think about the uh, the ratios and the amounts. Yeah. Of, like, you know, kind of salt with a higher... Uh, volume amount of like crystals are gonna it's gonna be different than if you have really fine crystals like sea salt so once you have those three ingredients together I would whisk give that a quick mix with your spatula or your whisk whichever one you've got handy just so that way um, everything is blitzed together before we add in all the ingredients so we're basically making what would be considered a filling for a lemon meringue pie um, it's a, a little bit like a curd I would say it's almost like a lemon curd um, just a little bit thicker. All right, cool. Now, you're going to have two egg yolks and one whole egg. All right. Uh, I know that you're like, what am I supposed to do with the, the egg whites that you have left over? Uh, the egg whites you have left over, you can toss into and make like an omelet tomorrow if you want, like an egg white omelet, or hold on to it and like use it to make a cake or any other thing that requires eggs and be a little bit more heart healthy with your egg whites. <laughs> hold on to it. Be if you want to be really uh, uh, extra about it, you can hold on to your egg whites and make macarons. So I'm going to go ahead and grab I have my two egg yolks and I have um, my egg white. And I'm going to go ahead and add that into the mixture that I have already. Now, this is a little bit different than um, sometimes what you see where you add the eggs, like, you know, as you heat it up. We're going to put everything in the saucepan before we stick it on the stove. And while that's happening, I'm double checking my berry glaze. Doesn't look yep. like it's Looks like it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my two egg yolks and egg white, and I'm just going to go ahead and dump that straight in. Okay. And along with that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water, just plain water. And I'm going to mix that, again, utilizing a whisk or spatula, if you've got on hand. In this case, I'm going to use a spatula or a whisk for this part, but then I'm going to use a spatula while we're stirring on the stove. And as you can see, I'm just mixing that all together. And you want that to be really, think about it this way. You want it to be pretty mixed. There's no thing as uh, over mixing at this point because we haven't done anything to it. We haven't heated it. It's not going in the oven. We're not, you know, trying to enact the gluten in it. There's no flour. So at the moment, over mixing it is not a bad thing. You're not going to scramble your eggs. Now, when we get on the stove, we're going to have to watch it and be a little bit more vigilant because you're going to have the unfortunate events of potentially curdling and scrambling your eggs, which nobody wants. So, okay. So I have like a liquid goop happening right now in my saucepan. And all I'm gonna do to this is I'm gonna add a half a cup uh, plus one tablespoon lemon juice about, okay, I just found a seed. So um, into the mixture, the egg mixture, the lemon juice is going to go, dump it straight in. And then I'm going to give that a quick mix. And it's going to look very loose. And that So I noticed my berry glaze was boiling a little bit and it's bubbling. So I went in and I lowered that down to low. So now it's just going to sit. And what we're going to do is we're going to stir it every so often. And then we're just going to go ahead and check on it. Um, in the next few minutes, it should thicken up, and it's going to be thick enough because of the cornstarch we put in it. But we're just going to go ahead and give it a quick mix because you don't want to burn the bottom. And just make sure it's good to go. How thick do we want it? Um, I would say it would be thick enough to go ahead and coat uh, the back of your spoon. Like a spoon? Yeah. Okay, I think I might be there. Yeah, just... actually, I think I might be there, too. If you want it to be a little bit thicker than that, and this is like your... Your FYI, if you don't, if you think you need a little a few more minutes, go ahead and do that. Mine seems pretty good. Mine is not drip off. It's taking quite a bit to drip off the spoon. So I'm going to go ahead and turn mine off, I think. Mine is, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Mine is dripping still a little fast for my taste. Akila's is perfect. Hers is good. Yeah, yours is good, Akila. So I'm going to go ahead and keep mine on for about another minute. That's exactly what you want, is you want, like, when you go ahead and pick it up from the spoon, you want a really slow drop. Okay. Mine, I think, needs another, another minute, maybe. Not that much, actually. So another minute. Julianne, I, 
I know, it's, it's, it's my phone, Akilah. For some reason, he keeps on popping off. Um, we're doing a medium heat for the lemon curd. Okay. So if you are, so I'm just checking my glaze again, and I think actually my glaze is good to go. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. And it will thicken as it cools. Yep. Once it's off the curd, it's going to get even thicker as it cools. So, so I'm sticking it aside. We're going to use it for our mascarpone, so it's just stick it to the side for now. Um, so I whisked together all that stuff that we've done for the lemon in lemon filling into the saucepan. We're going to stick it on the stove. We're gonna I'm going to sieve it. it. So Did I'm going to run mine through a sieve into the saucepan just to make sure I have no cornstarch lumps really. Yes. Um, actually, that would be smart to do if you went ahead and do go ahead and push it all through a sieve. Um, I, on the other hand, am thinking I'm good. I use the whisk and it works dissolved. And so I'm going to go ahead and dump it onto the stove. And this is where we're going to have to watch it. So we're going to go ahead and for about five minutes or so, it's going to go on medium heat until it starts to thicken. And once we start seeing it thicken onto the spoon, we'll lower the heat down. The reason why we want to continuously whisk this is because if you do not, you're going to scramble your eggs because the high heat of the stove is going to start cooking your eggs. And what you want is you want to make sure the heat is continuous throughout the whole mixture. So oop. let me bring you guys in closer. It's a little scary how close you got. Okay. So I'm going to grab my heat spatula somewhere amongst the recesses of all the things that I have, just in case while we mix. So what you should do is while you're mixing, I'm using my whisk at the moment, but I'm about to bust out my spatula. This is a heat resistant spatula. Um, what I would do is that if you're going to start seeing it brown a little bit on the outside. If it does, just start pushing that back down into um, the, the lemon filling. And like I said, we're on a medium heat. And once it starts to thicken, which I would say probably in the next five minutes or so, um, we're going to go ahead and lower down the heat. And what we're looking for in the consistency of this like kind of curd lemon meringue filling is that when you go ahead and um, stick like a spoon in it or like your spatula, you should be able to coat the whole thing and be able to run your finger down um, the back of it. And it will go ahead and leave an imprint. And that's what we're looking for. Is there a reason we're not double boiling this? Feels like a bit of a, a ball. No, of I know. To do this directly on the heat, right? Instead of double boiling, which is always a pain. Well, I think um, because of, I don't think we have enough. Um, well, because I think we put like water in it, one to like liquid it down a little bit more. Um, that's probably why. I would okay. say if we were doing the egg yolks first and cooking the egg yolks without anything in it, you would double boil it. Um, and then you're like, usually what you do, like when you make Italian meringues or anything like that, you cook right. those first and you warm them up and you add the sugar to create the meringue. But in this case scenario, we added all the ingredients, the liquid and, and everything like that, that I don't think it necessarily needs the, the double boiler. And the reason why um, Akila brought up double boiling is because eggs are very delicate and literally will take five seconds for it to scramble. That's why while I'm talking to you and facing the camera, I'm still stirring behind me. Because if I stop stirring, there's a moment where maybe this will curdle and it will scramble. And what you'll get is you'll get like lemon flavored eggs. So <laughs> lemon flavored eggs. Delicious. Mine are getting quite frothy as well. Yeah. So just, you know, and you don't necessarily have to like, you don't have to be like this. You don't have to like stir and stir and stir and like the scanner. But like, I would make sure it's a continuous kind of a stir, right? Like you can pause like I'm doing like right now for like a second and then keep going. You know, you don't have to like continuously move your hand. But you just want to do it enough that it doesn't, that it doesn't a burn at the bottom, but also as it cooks, and you'll see too, you'll see the sugar crystals too start going against the side as it melts and caramelizes a little bit. I think my heat's pretty good. It might be a little low. I might move it down a little bit. It's getting kind of thick, so. Yeah, once it gets really, once it starts to thicken, turn your heat down to like a medium low. And then what we're doing, at that point is just waiting for it to kind of custard down. So we're kind of creating like a lemon curd custard situation. The great thing is, Akila, is after this, we only have one more component and then we're going to put it all together. I know. It's just a lot. This one is just a lot of ingredients and a lot of steps. 
So I think it's just, this is one of those classic recipes of pre-preparing as much as possible so that you don't feel crazy. Yes. And the bad thing about um, doing something like this too is that we can't eat it right away. We're gonna have to let it chill in the fridge. Uh, I know. But it'll be good this evening. All right, so mine is still, I don't think mine's really that thick. I'm gonna switch to a spatula though. Mine is slowly getting there. Mine is so, so. Mine is like at like a, oh, I don't know if I can show this to the camera. It's at like a, it's still pretty liquidy, but it's slowly thickening. And I feel like we might be luckily past the, the point of making scrambled eggs. Yeah, because I, and I can start seeing it too. Like I'm feeling like it's getting a little thick at the bottom. Yeah. You can start feeling it get thick at the bottom. And once you start feeling it get thick at the bottom, this is the part where it gets really kind of a peak, uh, peckish, I guess is the word that I want to use. Um, like I'll show you guys, you can see that there's a little bit of light coating of, at the bottom. That means it's getting thick at the bottom. Um, if you keep it on high heat, you'll, you might scramble this custard and we don't want to scramble the custard. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower down my heat now to like a, a little bit of like a medium low, low heat. And then I'm gonna I continue to it. I like how tart it is. Yeah, I can smell of that lemon. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So that's gonna take a second. So what did you say, Julianne? Here's where mine's at right now in terms of a drip off the, it's pretty. That's pretty thick. Already. Yeah. Um, if you stick, um, if you've got a wooden spoon, Akila, I would, or a metal spoon, stick a spoon in it. Yeah, that's fine. And then just dunk it in. If it holds and you can put a line through and it shows, yeah, yours is fine. Okay. Yours is good. Am I turning off before the butter? Yep. Yep. Turn it off and then add butter. So Akila's uh, uh, lemon curd custard, that's what I'm calling it, has uh, thickened up enough. So she's gonna go ahead and take it off the stove and she's gonna add one and a half tablespoons of butter. And that's what's gonna do is it's gonna emulsify the custard. It's gonna add the richness of like that creamy buttery taste. And it's also gonna add a shine and a gloss. So that's why you're adding that in. Mine is getting pretty thick. I'm a little worried about it. And again, you want this butter to be cold. Yes. Uh, because the chill of the butter will also cool down. Um, I was going to say, I was like, my live video keeps pausing because I think the video doesn't think I'm doing anything. Because <laughs> I'm, well, not, I'm not near it and I'm not doing anything. So it's like, pause, pause, pause. Um, Here, this is my curd with, it's got a nice gloss in it now that it's got the butter. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, Mary, it's, um, there's a lot of freezing of the screen because it, it's, it's me, it's my camera. Um, for some reason, my camera keeps on switching off, like the screen, like it will just dim. And then my camera, my, the live assumes that I'm, I've left. But we're pretty close now, actually. I think mine looks pretty good. Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and test this. I'm gonna grab a spoon. That looks pretty good. What do you think, Akila? Let me see. Oh yeah, that looks great. Right? Looks good. So it's gonna start it thickening. Up. It'll thick. it'll thicken up a little more as it cools yeah. down. But I think it's pretty good. I feel like it's a little watery still. You think? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it for just a minute or two. I'm gonna do what you should not do, and I'm gonna turn up the heat a little. I use very heavy bottom pans that I think contribute the heat. So I think mine are just moving a little bit faster. Yeah, mine is not as heavy bottom. It, it feels like it's, oh, there we go. There we go. It was a lot, it was a little bit more liquidy than I would like. I'm gonna constantly stir. Um, so what we're gonna do in preparation for this uh, while I'm still stirring and Akil is pulling her things together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the mascarpone cream base. What you're gonna need is uh, mascarpone cheese, some condensed milk, some lemon juice, our friend lemon juice, um, and a bit of lemon zest, along with some of the berry glaze that we just made. So 
you might want to pull all that stuff together. Um, we're going to do all these things in a food processor. That'll be the easiest way. If you don't, if you don't have a food processor, you, again, you can use a blender. You can use a hand blender. Um, if you do mix it by hand, it will be a little bit more difficult just because of the mascarpone. But at this point, your mascarpone should be room temperature. It should not be um, straight from the fridge. And the reason why is because it's just like cream cheese, right? When you work with cream cheese and it's straight and cold from the fridge, then what ends up happening is that it goes ahead and um, it's harder to work with. Oh, there we go. Mine's thick now. Yeah? Yeah. I'm good. We're going to go ahead and start the mascarpone. I'm going to go ahead and grab three quarters cup of mascarpone cheese. It's room temperature. So like I said, if you're using um, a mascarpone that's cold, it's going to be harder to incorporate. If you're using one that is room temp, it'll be easier. It's just like cream cheese. If you don't have a mascarpone, um, you can totally use cream cheese if that's what you got on hand and just add a little bit of cream. Um, there was a substitution note on my Instagram. That's so where I would lower the amount of lemon juice, right? Because you're going to have it be a bit more tart than mascarpone. Yeah, we're only going to go ahead and put in about a tablespoon of lemon juice in the mascarpone. Okay. So I've got three quarters of a cup of mascarpone. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put all of this in, into the bowl. I'm just going and putting it straight into my food processor that you can see right here. I'm just going to go ahead and take the mascarpone. I'm going to have a quarter cup of condensed milk that I'm going to dump right in. And then you know what you can do with your leftover condensed milk? You can use it for coffee, at the bottom of coffee, and make Vietnamese coffee. You can take your condensed milk, and if you want to be really cool about it, you can make key lime pie. <laughs> That'll be the last step. So I went ahead and I put the condensed milk in. I'm going to go ahead and take a tablespoon of lemon juice plus the zest of about half a lemon, and I'm going to dump that into my food processor. And then I'm going to take two tablespoons of that berry glaze that I made, which has thickened since I sat it down. We're going to take two tablespoons of that, and we're going to go ahead and stick that straight into the same mascarpone mix. And my berry glaze is still warm. I don't know about your tequila. Mine's a little bit warm, too. It should be. Hopefully. It should be warm. And that will help um, with the mascarpone if your yes. mascarpone is a little yeah. bit it's still thick. Right. We're only putting two tablespoons. So I'm taking my tablespoon. And I'm just sticking one and two. And we're going to give that a little bit of a mix. So I've got my food processor. Where's my food processor top? Uh -huh. So I'm just going to go put it on my food processor top. If I can put it together. Okay. We're going to give that a blitz until it's smooth. What are we looking for in terms of just like until it's mixed? Yeah, until it's yeah. about smooth and creamy, Akila. Yeah, I think I need to do a scrape down of my bowl. It would help, guys, for me to plug in appliances. Oh my gosh. That was such a Julianne move, Mary, for me to not plug in appliances. You're like, why isn't this working? I turned it on and I'm like, I don't understand what's wrong with technology. lovely pink color because I went ahead and I used raspberry. Um, like Aquila, I feel like it's a little high up in my food processor, so I'm going to scrape it. I'm going to push down a little bit. It's going to feel loose, much like a, like kind of like a cheesecake filling, if, for those of you who make cheesecake, um, without that kind of like gelatinous feel of kind of like I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. This is my mascarpone mix. It's pretty creamy. I might give it a, like, one more, one or two bits of a blitz. Yeah, that looks good, Tequila. I think that's good. I might blitz it for just, like, one second more just to make sure. I like the color. All right. Good to go. So this is the fun part. We are now going to go ahead and compose the berry dream pie. Very exciting. And I'm going to go ahead and use the last of my raspberries that I told you guys that I completely forgot to stare at. So I didn't know if the berries were good or not. So I'm going to go ahead and grab um, some of those extra raspberries. 
that I didn't use. I'm also gonna use some blackberries. If you've got strawberries on hand, that's a good one to use as well. I'm just gonna give that a quick rinse because we're gonna go and take those berries and we're gonna put them into the whole berries into this, um, this pie. As I stare at my berries, cause I'm like, I didn't stare at my berries properly earlier. Okay, some berries. I've got some blackberries too, I'm gonna mix those in. I do enjoy a nice blackberry. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, you want about, I would say two cups of fruit. So that would probably be like two pints, I would say. If you wanna put more berries, it's your prerogative. Um, and you can do a mix of berries. You don't have to just do blackberries or raspberries. You can do blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. Um, and I mean, to be fair, I was thinking to myself that if you just had frozen on hand, you probably could get away with using the frozen if you defrosted it, to be fair. Um, well, you can certainly use frozen for the glaze, right? Yeah, for the glaze, you totally could have used it. You didn't even have to try to use fresh. So I'm just double checking my berries because I always get a little bit paranoid that they I might know. be some like berries at the bottom that might have been like buried but and like icky. suddenly have fuzz on them and you're like, what yep. happened? So, especially because we're eating them whole. If we were cooking them down like the glaze and I missed one, I probably wouldn't feel as bad because at least you boiled it a little bit. But... And you can check them as you're putting them on too, right? Yes, like... we can check them as we're putting them on. So now we're gonna go through all the components. This is where yep. the fun part starts. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the pie crust which if you pre-baked your pie crust, it should be cool, right? So my pie crust is cool to the touch. My I'm crust go did not work out, by the way. Everything about it, like, just melted down. Oh, so, that's okay. I will point that out. <laughs> my my crimps were better, and then they kind of just glopped over to the side. So we're going to go ahead and take the marscapone. That's going on the bottom. So I like taking a nice spatula or if you have like a flat kind of like, you know, apparatus, if you don't just use a spoon, take your mascarpone and we're gonna stick that at the bottom of the pie. It's gonna feel a little bit loose and that's okay because remember you're sticking this in the fridge. And so when it goes back in the fridge, it's gonna go ahead and um, chill and it's gonna harden just a little bit up. Almost like a, I don't wanna call it like a no-bake cheesecake, but it kind of feels like that a little. Okay, and we're just gonna spread the bottom of, are we gonna spread the mascarpone mixture um, down the bottom of the pie. You also wanna go up the sides, but leave about a half inch at the It's top. pretty, it's a pretty hefty amount. Should we be using the whole amount? I'm you not sure if my pie crust is just a bit shallow or. Your pie crust might be shallow. If you feel like, you should be going up the sides though, Akila. I am going up the sides. Okay. I, might, I mean, whatever. It's fine. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find it'll out. A little, it'll just get a little large. So I'm leaving, basically what I'm leaving open is I'm leaving open like the little um, crimps that I had, but I'm going up the sides. So I'm okay. going up the sides and I'm covering the sides up because you want this uh, mascarpone to be on all sides of the pie basically Got it. every slice so i'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out it doesn't have to be pretty right now this is just the base so i'm just smoothing that out it almost looks like yogurt mm. that's what texturally so that's that and then next we're gonna go ahead and dollop in this is gonna be uh, the restraining part of our our chore we're gonna go ahead and take the lemon the lemon like meringue curd that we made earlier and we're gonna go ahead and dollop it on top of you okay about that what was that mine is still a bit warm um it should be okay honestly Akila. i feel like because okay. i was about to chill it okay so we're just gonna dollop i'm gonna dollop and the reason why we're dolloping is because if you spread it all on um you might displace the mascarpone that you just put in so i would just dollop and then what we're going to do is we're going to spread it and it doesn't matter how you put it on it doesn't have to like completely cover i'm literally taking my spatula and here i'll show you and i'm just dropping just dropping in um in random spots okay and it's okay if it like doesn't completely go all the way around we're going to smooth it out what you're trying to do is you're just trying to add it in like i said without displacing the mascarpone and then we'll smooth it out 
when you have enough on there. And we're not going to be using the whole thing, are we? Or are we using the whole amount? I am using the whole amount. Oh, okay. I'm using the whole Okay, I dolloped it, and then now, I'm, because of the fact that I have enough on top, I'm smoothing it over. I'm not doing craziness over top um, the mascarpone. So that's what it's looking like right now. Okay. It really is like a no-bake cheesecake. I feel like this is what's going to happen. All right. Next, you're going to take your berries, and we're going to drop them all over the pie. Okay? So, and I'm going to, while we do this, I'm going to inspect my berries and double check. There you go. There we go. That's a much better angle. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the berries a little bit. So that way we can go ahead and do the whole pie. So I'm going to check my berries and you're just putting them wherever you want in the pie. We're trying to cover the whole pie essentially, but if you don't have enough berries, don't worry about it. If you want to put more berries, go for it, but literally just like a layer of berries. And I'm just putting a mix of blackberries and raspberries and I'm staring at them again just to make sure I don't put anything that might be problematic, AKA mold. Nobody wants to bite into a giant piece of mold. That feels like the antithesis of dessert. Okay. How's it going, Akila? Does it feel like it's going to be too shallow? No, I think it's going to be okay, actually. I just am going a bit slow in getting the lemon in. But you I think can, it's... You, you should be slow, though, because it's, it's a lot that you're putting on top that we're going to have to smooth over. Yeah. I'm almost there. Just trying to get. I was being like really particular about the way I was placing the berries and then realized we're about to glop on the glaze and no one's going to see. <laughs> we're not going to do it. I was, I was being so pretty about it. I was like, oh, let me, let me put them in little rows. And now I'm just sort of dumping them in. I don't think, if Sherry's watching you, I'm sure she's looking at you with a disapproving. <laughs> Sherry, uh, if you are out there and you're looking at it, you're just like, oh God. I apologize. Oh, hey, Sean. Yes, Sean, I have an apron this time which is very unlike me. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add a few more berries, actually. I'm going to have more blackberries, I think. I know this is, this is the part where Sherry probably, if she were watching. She's probably horrified right now. My friend Sherry would probably be like, Julianne, why are you just haphazardly placing those berries? We should be placing them so that every single bite of pie, you get a nice, bite of berry, which fair, fair. I once made a cheese plate and I just had cut the bread and the baguettes and just laid it on a plate and Sherry came over and she immediately started rearranging the whole <laughs> thing. Cause she was like, that's not, I'm not okay with that. I mean, that sounds about right. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta fix that up. Okay. I feel like I, if I probably placed the berries like if I was channeling Sherry and was placing the berries correctly, I might have been able to fit another berry or two. But I'm getting to the point where I don't think I'm going to be able to fit any more berries. I'm trying to do a spiral. You're doing let, much better than I, Akila. But let's see how that's going to succeed. I think I can do one, maybe one more. My thing keeps on pausing, so I'm always like, hmm, okay. One more berry. Okay. So I've stuck a whole bunch of berries onto my pie. I have the mascarpone, I have the lemon curd that I've dolloped, and I've taken all my berries and random raspberries and blackberries. And look at Akila being so much better than I. <laughs> I just dumped I don't all the berries on top. Berries. See how some random raspberries are like three in a row? So this person's gonna get three bites of raspberry and then one person's just gonna only get blackberry because I didn't think about this and I just dumped it all in. But that's okay. I feel like I can fit one more berry in here if I squeeze. So I'm going to try to put one more in just to be that person. I suspect I'm going to run out of berries and I'll have a little like ring that's not berry covered. I know I keep on staring at it. I'm so suspicious. I just like stare at the berries and I'm like, hmm. Okay. It's so scary. Yeah, mine's okay. not fully, mine is almost fully covered, but not, oh, I can't tilt it. That's going to fall. Okay, I'm going to grab one more. 
one more beauty. Okay, my video got paused again. So hopefully you guys stayed with me. All right. I think we're in a good place. Okay, so I randomly got my berries onto my pie. And now I'm going to go ahead and dump the uh, berry glaze on top. And we're, I'm just going to pour it on top and then smooth it over. So let me change the angle here. You're just going to just drop. OK. Yeah, I'm just going to drop it and then smooth it over. I Got feel it. like this is the easiest way to do it. And in spots where I feel like it needs more, I'll just add more. I really could have done a better job of rolling out my pie crust, is what I'm realizing. I feel like... I don't uh, like how it is, like trying to trim it off well, gently. I think that, like, for example, I was thinking to myself I should have done a better job at like pulling together my berries but it's gonna get covered by the glaze so I feel like I'll get redemption somewhere. so <laughs> I am gonna go now I'm gonna smooth over the berry glaze over the top just with this like wooden spatula and you can see the lovely seeds uh, my live feed ended. I didn't even notice the clock. We are basically almost done though. So um, just if you were staying with me, I was with Akila and hopefully she pops back on when she sees that the Instagram live started again. And we basically were making berry dream pie. And we were at that point where we had taken the crust, we put down the mascarpone cream, the lemon curd, the berries, and we were just putting down the berry glaze. And I was showing everybody that basically I was taking the berry glaze and I was smoothing it over the top of these berries. And what we're going to do is after this is done, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the fridge for um, about four hours or so. And then we're going to go ahead and try it. And if you want to be a little bit extra about it, you could probably dollop some whipped cream on top. Akila, my live video completely ended because I forgot that we went over just a little bit of an hour, but we're basically almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of my glaze smooth it over my berries. And the great thing about this is that once it starts cooling in the fridge, it's all going to get a little bit thicker and it's going to go ahead and get a little bit glossier. And then I just realized I forgot, Akila, I forgot to add butter in my curd. <laughs> oh, well, it'll probably still set. It's yeah. more of like a finishing touch, really. Yeah, it's more of like a finishing touch. I just it's thought about that. I was, no, because I, I stare. I was like, why do I have a, a stick, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of butter staring at me? And I'm like, what was that for? And then realized I forgot to put it in my curd. Guys, accidents happen, and that's okay. So this is still going to be delicious, despite the fact that I forgot to put the butter to give it a nice little gloss. Hopefully, it'll still set. It should. Um, so I went ahead, and I smoothed over the berry glaze on top of my berries. My berries are peeking out of the glaze, which I think is okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the fridge. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the fridge for, like I said, um, probably about, you know, four hours or so. And then this pie will stay good if you keep it in the fridge for the next three days or so. If it lasts that long. I know. Oh, well, I was like, anyone in bed you can come over and I'll give you some pie. Anyone wants to come over here. <laughs> um, and I was just saying, Akila, too, that if you wanted to be a little bit extra and you had like whipping cream on hand, you could completely make um, some whipped cream and go ahead and smooth that over the top. Or you could just dollop it when you serve it. And that's basically it. Well, we also talked about, or you could do a proper meringue. If you that's right. Very, very, very... If you're super ambitious, you guys, you can take your extra egg whites that you went ahead and you got together, and you can go ahead and take that, and you can put that um, over the stovetop with some sugar, and you can go ahead and make a meringue, and uh, like whip it up in with a blender, and uh, toast it a little bit, but I think we're good. Matt, I want to be clear, I didn't treat the butter with any disregard. I, know, I, I didn't forget a single piece of butter. There we go. <laughs> Yay, it looks great. 
I didn't push my berries down enough. Mine has like a little like outer ring of the lemon meringues. I feel like I didn't press my berries down enough because they're still sort of visible. Mine are also slightly visible, but I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, I, I will say though that we're, we'll find out once we taste test how badly that butter was needed. I'm sure that I probably needed a little extra touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take then this pie. I'm gonna stick it in the oven for four hours and we're gonna go ahead and slice it up after that. Everything Wait, is set. oven or fridge, Julianne? You said oh, oven. Oh, fridge, yes. Put it in your fridge for four hours. Don't put it like, in the do oven. Do not put it in your oven for four hours. Do not put it in the oven for four hours. Thank you, not, Akira. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is it. We've made Berry Dream Pie. I've been joined by Akila. We've had Mary discussing things at the bottom. I've been terrible. Hardly ever looked at the comments as we were running around the kitchen. Hopefully Mary kept you entertained and answered a lot of your questions. Um, as always, thank you for spending your Saturday with me. Uh, for those that can, if you're in New York, today is the first day of early voting. Please go out there and exercise uh, your right in this democracy to make your voice heard. Otherwise, and you can vote all week. Just look it up. The voting hours are slightly different at your polling location. Exactly. But great resources that tell you what they are. And if you can't vote, um, if uh, maybe vote absentee. And if you haven't voted absentee on November 3rd, don't forget to cast your vote. Um, I will see you on another Saturday. Um, in October, I believe. If not, I will see you in November. Um, I am not doing this every week anymore, post-pandemic craziness, um, but I am going to definitely see you once or twice a month. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this rendition of Baking with Friends. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday. Thank you, Akila, for joining me and remembering your butter. <laughs> and never I'll for, and for I'll showing never. your pie. Like, here, here, here is our loveliness. We've created together and uh, I'm going to stick this in the fridge, not the oven. And four hours from now, I will show you a photo of what it looks like. And please, if you make this, not, if not today, if you make it in the next few days or even like months from now, whatever, please tag Akil and I, let us know how it went and uh, everybody enjoy your Saturday and please go vote. Thanks, Thank everybody. you. Bye, Bye everybody.